Welcome to the Fighting on Film podcast, the podcast all about classic and obscure war movies, from the Normandy landings to the days of chivalry and swords. If it's been captured on film, we're going to try and cover it. I'm Robbie of RM Military History. I'm Matthew Moss of Historical Firearms and the Armourer's Bench. Hi guys, thank you for joining us again on another episode of Fighting on Film. Today we are going to be discussing Channel Incident, which is an interesting little film uh, made by the British Ministry of Information during um, 1940. And uh, yeah, fans of our Mrs. Grant episode will know that we love a MOI film here at Fourth HQ. So we delve the archives again and we think we found a doozy today. Yeah, I um, think this is actually the first on screen portrayal of the Dunkirk evacuations. Yes, um, Operation Dynamo to be a bit more pernickety. Yes, um, let's be official. Yes, yeah, be official, Operation Dynamo. And it's full of famous faces and some fabulous kit. Uh, some great little facts of and kernels of knowledge in there again. With it being such a short film, we can basically talk through the whole plot of the, of the actual film, can't we? So, yeah, we can. Um, it opens up with the porter of uh, uh, a sort of uh, it's like a bar, sailing club. It's yeah. A sail- yeah, a bar in a sailing club is basically what yeah. it is. And um, answers the phone and it's the Admiralty calling to call on small boats for the evacuation. And the the old caretaker, who is ex Royal Navy himself, uh, nips outside and says, um, "He's called Ferris." Well, yes, Ferris, pl- played by Gordon Harker, and he uh, tells the Admiralty that there's only one one boat at the club at the moment, and that is the Wanderer, which is a, a motor yacht. That's it. Yeah. And he nips outside and and uh, informs the. <laughs> but not sorry, but not before well, he pronounces Admiralty really weird. He does. He pronounces admiralty in the, the, the strangest way possible. He's sort of like, what, what does it say? Like admiralty? The admiralty. <laughs> the admiralty. Yeah. So he basically nips out to the uh, to, to the boat, the Wanderer, and he, he tells the, the lady on board who is the uh, owner. And he says, the admiralty have been on, on, the, on the phone and they, they uh, want Wanderer for uh, the evacuation. And uh, he, the, the, the lady on board is... Um, very enthusiastic. She wants to take the boat across herself. Yeah. Um, and he's like, with what crew? Uh, and and um, she basically says, well, you come along, Ferris, and bring uh, Johnny with you as well. Yeah. And Johnny's in sort of like this little boat next to him that I, I assume that Ferris has come up to. Yeah, uh, and I assume they were moored, so he all. like came yeah. up to them. Um, but yeah, so Johnny is played by Kenneth Griffith, yeah, who is witty in the wild geese, and that blew my mind. He's so young in it. That's what does it. it... Yeah, I think he was like fifteen or something when they shot this movie. I was like, wow, it's it's. Look at that. Who's it's that? It's witty. That's, that's it's witty from wild geese. <laughs> I wonder wow. if he had any heart pills on him. <laughs> <laughs> Ferris basically says, "Well, we can't bring Johnny along. He's um, a bit simple." He says, "Doesn't he?" Yeah, he's a bit simple, which is yeah. you know, and to, and. To... Uh, not really. Ken Griffith you know. really does like play play that up a little bit. Mm, a bit. Um, he doesn't really have any lines. He just sort of like grins, sort of like and, notions, and, and sort of looks yeah, and yeah. stuff. It's a it for today. It's a bit ham fisted. It's a bit needless. Yeah. Um, it's, it's. I kind of don't know why they included that. No. It just I'm not sure on the. Perhaps they wanted to like hint that this you know everyone's doing their bit. Even yeah, maybe that can't fight. Yeah, that kind of thing. Perhaps could be. I mean, it, mm. it sort of feels that way. Um, but the, the the lady who is the uh, like looking after the ship, she's played by uh, Peggy Ashcroft, who was a big yes. stage star at the time, mm. and she'd just been on the Thirty Nine Steps, um, the Hitchcock film. Hitchcock film, yeah. So she Great she's film. a big star for this one. Mm. Um, and obviously, as we've as we just saw in Miss Grant Goes to the Door, these big name actors they work for free because they want to help their country, they want to do their bit. Exactly. So you do get big names, and uh, talking of big names, Anthony Asquith directed this movie. He is massively revered British film director from that period. Yeah. Um, Very well known. Yeah, and the son of Liberal PM or Prime Minister uh, Herbert Asquith. And this is not the only MOI film he makes. He also produces. No, he makes a couple, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, one called Rush Hour, all about um, like taking public transport um, mm. during wartime. The importance thereof, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. 
So yeah, getting back to the plot. They they agree they'll take the boat out themselves and they head to Ramsgate, which is where the sort of the staging point is. They arrive and um she's she's disguised herself, hasn't she? She's put yeah, on she, a balaclava um, and a hat, yeah, a tin yeah. hat and uh, a long duffel coat and she pops Get the up tin the tin hat uh, from the ARPs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, and she runs up the steps and she reports to like a young naval officer and she says, um, it's Wanderer from X Sailing Club. We're gonna we're ready to go. And the naval officer basically says to her, Well, go and grab some any rifles on board, go and grab some if you haven't. Um which is interesting because it's one of the fallacies of Dunkirk that the boat little boats were manned by their owners, where yeah, as is... they they weren't actually really? in reality. Yeah. Very few were. Yeah, they were um, requisitioned them... by the Royal Navy, weren't they? Mm. Most of them were, were, were manned by either Royal Navy or Royal Navy reserve ratings and that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, well, they kind of allude but, that, don't they? Because Ferris is a reservist. He says so, doesn't he? Yeah, he says he, he he's, mm. he's too old to fight, but he's a he, yeah he's a Navy man. Yeah. And basically, she she turns around to go and pick up some rifles, and what I think is probably the best pickup line uh, I've ever seen on a film is Bren Gunner turns to her, or a soldier turns to her, and says. Here, Skipper, you don't want rifles. I've got a Bren gun here. I'll come along. And she she jumps at it. You know, she she knows she knows a good Bren gun when she, mm. she sees one. Yeah. She's not soft this one. She's like, yeah, or yeah, definitely a Bren gun for me. Thank you very much. Hop on board. Yeah. And uh, the mentioning of the Bren gun brings us onto the alley tally. It's time for alley tally on fighting on film. So we we wanted to put the the Bren gun in this movie in in on the alley tally, um, put it up there, because this Bren isn't just your regular run of the mill Bren, it's an nope. aerial mounted Bren, anti air yeah. Bren. He's got um, itself on his on his on a tall AA mount, mm. and he's yeah, it's it's just it's got the, it's, it's it's got all the extra there. grip at the back on the on yeah, the it's a Mark One Bren, so it has mm. the grip still. Yeah, yeah, beautiful looking Bren, isn't it? It is it's yeah, we get yeah. a good bit of Bren action. And that's one of the things that makes me really enjoy this film. There's a couple mm. of little aspects of this film that are really great, but mm-hmm. the fact that we get a nice bit of Bren action, you can't turn that down. If it had one of those fancy aerial sights, one Ooh, of those, or, like, or or a pan mag. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Pan Yeah, mag. that that would be alley. That pan would mag be would pro- be like be proper alley. Be pushing it up the alley, Tanner. Mm, mm. yeah. And uh, Tanner as well is wearing a mixture of 37 pattern and 08 pattern gear. Yeah. Which is also quite alley. Anyway, so we've we've embarked our Bren Gunner and yep. we're headed to Dunkirk. And one of the points that I did like about the film was that the Royal Navy Reserve officer, or the Royal Navy officer, I don't know whether he was uh, reserve, but he, he basically explains, you take the boat out and you ferry the men from the beach to the bigger ships that are waiting yeah. offshore. Which is which accurate. Is, it is. And that's a yeah. good um, little point for them to make because obviously a lot of the misconceptions around Dunkirk for many people now is, you know, that the little ships brought men straight back. They did all the you know, work, were, but that's not but they, true. They did do, they did, they did a lot of work in well, yeah. sort of ferrying backwards and forwards, but they weren't bringing them straight back to Britain. That no, no, just, just taking ages. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then we get our first sort of like scenes on the beach mm. and we and get some of stock footage, isn't there used? Mm, yeah. We get some um, of that stock footage. Mm, very, very like for now, it's very recognisable Dunkirk stock footage, but it would have been brand new at that point. Yeah, I, 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 I don't doubt that it would have been, you know, brand spanking new for the viewer. So, because Channel Incident came out in October 1940. Right. Okay. So we're literally a few months after. A few months later. So mm. this stock footage would have been on newsreels, etc. But it would have been, it would have been like brand new, and and it, and it's really, it's it fits really nicely with um the way the film is shot by the director Anthony Asquith. Yeah. Yeah, it's shot beautifully. Um, really, it's really a great, shot It's nice. a great little film. It's another really nice, really nicely shot film. Mm. You know, there's there's sort of like bullet impacts in the water and you get splashes. Yeah, yeah. Squibs there's going bits off. Of like, yeah. yeah, squibs going off and there's there's little uh, planks floating by yeah. and you get yeah. this one really uh, brilliant sort of like brief shot of a floating soldier that's either wounded yeah, or dead. Yeah. 
That's nice. And that's when it sort of like hits you and you're like, oh, yeah. this is this is life or death stuff now. And there's a shot, you know, you get the shot of the the lads coming off of the beaches, and there's a fair mm. few of them. You know, they're not, you know, it, it's not. I think for a for a Ministry of Information film, it doesn't it's, it's quite a high budgeted one, I would say. Yeah, there's there's at least a platoon of yeah, of men definitely. There. I mean, they're called they could have they're, they're grenadier guards. Those guys. yes. Um, looks like they, they brought in grenadier guards mm. to, to act as the the um, soldiers being taken off. Yeah, and you know that they're in a, a lovely mixture of thirty seven and 08 pattern as well. Um, yeah, I think some even have um, ankle parties, which was was really nice. Oh, I didn't um, notice that. Yeah, I think at least one or two did, and um, gas brassards on, which was really nice. I think I saw one. Oh yeah, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, yeah. that's alley gas brassards. Mm. That's alley. That yeah. that could have gone on the alley tally, to be fair, because um, a lot of those just got ripped off or, or you know left it left on the beaches. Um, mm. So yeah, but while all this is going on, you've got um, Peggy Ashcroft's skipper. She keeps yeah. asking for um, if every, any of the, every group she picks up. Every yeah, she goes. Oh, have you seen number three company, fourth division REs? Um, Royal engineers for anyone. Royal who engineers. Know. Yeah, and she's yeah. asking after uh, the the skipper of the boat, the 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 the, the actual owner of the boat, and we yes, doesn't allude to it romantically involved with this man we assume we well um, i think it's i think it's might be briefly mentioned she briefly she briefly does a little bit of explanation to johnny mm -hmm. uh, he, he she he, he like looks at him and goes skipper that's it and and she she goes no johnny we're going to go and find the skipper um he's over there fighting that's it so yeah. we kind of get that link that you know it's it's her husband yeah I'm, i i was and, stupid and i didn't even realize that till the last 10 seconds of the film <laughs> i had no idea i just thought she i thought she genuinely was just looking after the boat for him and wanted to know if he was safe i thought it was a bit more innocent than that I didn't, I didn't romantically involved but yeah there's a little there's, i mean well we'll get to this in a minute but to be yeah. fair to watch that end scene you don't really get a romantic feel from no, when you, do don't. no you don't <laughs> So they're getting the lads off, and they're showing um, uh, the the boats with the uh, the boats that the, the guys get on, mm. and uh, the the boats mentioned are actually genuine Dunkirk ships, which we thought yeah. was really nice. Um, that is really a, a nice touch. They they mm. name a few, don't they? Yeah, you've got um, the SS Princess Louise, which mm. we we searched that we couldn't find any evidence of that one no. being a genuine ship. But then we, well, we did S find a mention of the uh, the Blackburn Rover. Yeah, Blackburn Rover. Um, unfortunately, she was mined off of Dunkirk on the, on the second of June, nineteen forty, and, and didn't manage to bring any any men back. Um, mm. And then you had the SS Devo Devonia, Devonia. Might Not be really? Devonia. That sounds Devonia. like a shit name. Yeah. yeah, and she was beached at Bray Dunes and and didn't bring anyone back. And there's fo photos taken by um, the the Wehrmacht after they. Um, came into Dunkirk of, of the ship beached um, so yeah unfortunately these two ships didn't make it back to Blighty but it's nice they get a mention in the movie yeah it's an interesting inclusion that they've decided to include the names of these two ships that were involved but didn't obviously make it back I mean perhaps mm. that was either some sort of tribute or that was the perhaps they were in the news and they were two Could ship names that they knew were involved for sure yeah yeah that might be right or maybe just names of the ships that the, the guys that were involved in the movie said yeah possibly you know because there's there's a high chance those grenadier guards were at, were taken off at dunkirk yeah there is yeah you know, I'm, I'm not sure if if the grenadier guards were involved but you know there's a high chance there is no i think there were i think there was at least one battalion of the grenadier guards over there mm. with the baf yeah uh, every every boatload she's frantically asking have you seen any number three re um which I think is a little bit presumptuous, though. I know uh, that, what there's 120,000 men coming off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll write yeah, down needle. every single platoon that I see. It's a yeah, bit, a, bit, yeah. a little bit of a, um, a needle in a haystack, let's say, bit. to to hope to find him. Um, but yeah, she's getting more exhausted and more and uh, and more despondent with not finding anyone that's mm. you know even even seen them. Um, but all this time, you know, there's the um, Tanner, the brain gunner, who's played by uh, another big name, actually. He was played by uh, Robert Newton. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was in Hitchcock's Jamaica Inn before the war. Mm -hmm. 
He was in Gaslight, Oliver Twist after the war. Mm. Uh, he's probably best known for like playing roles as a pirate. He was in Treasure Island, Disney's Treasure Island. Wow. And um, Long John Silver. He oh, played okay. Long John Sh- uh, Silver as well. He was also in Desert Rats as an alcoholic. There you go. There's some Jerry planes flying over and, and Tanner's giving it mm. some with his brain, isn't he? Yeah. Mm. Good scene. It's good. A good scene. It's great. Yeah. You get him reloading the brain, give, mm-hmm. chattering away at some stookers. And then unfortunately, he gets hit. Yeah. Um, and it, it's not very sort of, you know, these, these MOI films aren't meant to be the most action packed thing, but it, I think it's done tastefully. For yeah, a, for I mean, propaganda movie. to be to be fair, there's you know, this you get a real sort of like feel for the action that's going on. You know, there's plenty of gunfire mm. in the background. There's yeah. squibs going off in the water to create splashes, and you know, yeah, that, that's so it's a being montage, isn't it? And pulled onto the ships, and yeah, it's a really, it's a very effective film. I think it portrays probably the realities of you know bringing bringing the men onto the boats yeah, quite definitely. well you know they're struggling the the, yeah. the the water's sort of up to the gunnels and men are hanging off mm. the side and you know they're yeah, scrambling to get the, up you know the, the actual scaling the movie can show you know because mm. it, it doesn't have the highest budget it's all completely. very tightly shot yeah, yeah, so you yeah. never see like the background you just see like the men clambering up or it's a shot I mean, that's tight on the boat or you know that's it you know it, it is a testament to Asquith's ability as a filmmaker to make mm. that to make an eight minute movie just as epic as, I don't know, Dunkirk 58 or Dunkirk mm. 17, you know, mm. it's sort of, you know, with, with 20 or 30 cast member, probably with the, the yeah. Grenadier Guards. With the, like, with the Grenadier Guards included. Yeah. You, you I think get, down the, the line, what would be fun would be to do a, a special on Dunkirk and how it's portrayed in various films. So definitely uh, channel incident, um, Mrs. Minerva from 1943, Mm-hmm. Uh, Dunkirk 58 and then Dunkirk 2017. I think that'd be a fun yeah, that would be sort good of to contrast how these things are like discussed and, and shown. Yeah, it would be. And I think it probably a slightly scale. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe. this is pretty high up there, though. This is yeah, this is a pretty good depiction, I think. And to sort of to see how this really really short film tackles uh, the, the the a really grand scale thing, mm. you know, at we. You know, we talked about we've talked about Battle of the Bulge, and and the way that doesn't deal with scale, but mm. yet an eight minute film with a micro budget, yes, can tackle something as grand as Dunkirk and get it really quite quite spot on, really. Yeah, I mean, much like theirs is the glory. Um, yeah, it takes a, a microcosm of a much larger battle and looks at one area, but it still manages to tell the general story of the larger operation that's going on around it. Yeah, and, and it's just it's just good filmmaking, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and it, it's nice to see, you know, coming off of watching a few a few stinkers doing this podcast, you know, it is it's nice to see a well made film for a change. You know, it, it's a breath of fresh air, really. You don't, I don't think you appreciate a well put together movie until you've seen some some poor, some poor ones. True, and yeah. obviously, Channel Incident is probably even less well known than Miss Grand Goes to the Door, and oh, the other uh, yeah. NOI film that we've covered. I mean, I'd never, I'd because never heard of this until I found it in the Imperial War Museum's online archive. I, I'd never heard of it. I'd never seen no, it. I'd, I'd never, never had it. any idea that it existed. No, I, I was, I was super excited. I was like, Robbie, look what I found. Yeah, it's another was... MOI film, and it's really at, good. Yeah, absolutely. I got a mad message uh, late <laughs> at night saying, "Oh my god, look at this!" You know, and it, it I was like, "Wow!" You know, it sort, it really does sort of capture your. Little, it's got a really nice little narrative. Mm. Um. You know, it's really sort of, it's just a nice, tightly made little film. Yeah, um, and, it is. and these MOI films are that generally. They're they're generally not bad because they're trying to tell. They're either trying to tell something that's happened to in, to inspire you because that's the point of them. They're propaganda films, mm. or they're trying to to, to sway your opinion. Yeah, so they instruct. are. Yeah, instruct. Mm. They are done in a certain way. They are punchy and quick you don't have enough time to sort of uh, oh i don't know about the right or wrong of this no 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 you know think how we want you to think sort of (laughs) filmmaking (laughs) you know that's what it is so tanner's been shot yes tanner's tanner's sadly died and um the operation's coming to a close Mm. uh they they head back to um ramsgate yeah and we get some scenes of of uh, the the lady skipper of the boat basically looking for her her husband that's 
not been found yet. So yeah. she's not seen any sight of mm. um, his his Royal Engineers company. And there's some great and, footage, um, isn't there? Like, there is, yeah, that, that Ramsgate footage. Before. I hadn't seen some of that no, before. No, no. It's stock footage of the men arriving back. Mm. It makes me wonder I mean, sometimes we, with these movies, are, is that the only way that stock footage has survived in that movie? I wonder. Sort That's of how in point. Um, yeah. First of the Few about the Spitfire, mm. the, the only way the footage of that original Spitfire um, like production model mm. um, pre-war has survived is through the movie. So I wonder if possibly that's the reason that footage isn't seen very often it just it just got me thinking yeah i mean we one of the the key shots that we get is sort of like a quick pan of the beaches and it's that classic one of that sort of shows a deck gun in the foreground that's it and then some other smaller boats further on and then just men wading that's one of the iconic like dunkirk shots that we see on most documentaries and, and you know is is the most probably widely seen yeah massive I, I don't there's some of those shots at Ramsgate that you know you, yeah I've never seen it. it's genuine it, it, it has to be genuine because it looks like it's filmed at a different frame rate yes um, yeah and a different stock of, of film for uh, film mm, reel it does um, but yeah so she she's looking around um, and you know there's sort of yeah and there's like a brief over like voiceover is is like where is he God where is he yeah you know during during one of the, like the during the, one of the scenes of her pulling men off the beach and yeah. not finding it because she's getting more and more desperate I mean, the to find The him chances of her finding him... Are like I said, needle in a haystack. Yeah. Very, very. Yeah. But, you know, she's she's panicked. She's desperate. She wants to find her husband. And That's right. She knows how desperate the situation in France is if there's, you know, they're calling for little boats like the one. Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we kind of... The, the, the only criticism I have of the film is the sort of the ending to it where yeah it's very quick you know the, she finally gets home she's at the docks and she's running around the docks looking for um her husband you know she runs past a bed for ql and um and uh there there he is then like, she spots him at last yeah and she goes she runs over and you know getting into her austin kt <laughs> yeah, yeah um and she she says i've been looking for you and he goes well here i am in like the most matter of fact voice ever, and that's it. That's the yeah. Cut to the end. That's end. that's the end of the film. M O Y N screen. That's all yeah. you're getting. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, oh well, that wasn't the heartfelt reunion I was <laughs> expecting. It felt very like sort of, you know, like how how we sort of are sort of shown relationships <laughs> like eighty years ago to be a bit very straight laced down the middle mm. sort of thing. It's very much like, oh, I found you. Oh, good. It's yeah, like, it's a very, it's a very what? matter of fact, very sort yeah. of like curt, glib sort of like mm. reunion where they're just like, oh well, here I am. It's very, it's like stiff upper lip stuff, isn't it? Mm, it is. Oh, there's no time to dwell on these sort of things. Let's just keep going with the war effort. To be fair, he probably wants to get taken to the hospital pretty quick. Probably you know, does. He's, <laughs> he's got a schmise around in his in his leg. <laughs> you know, he wants to, he wants to be gone. He wants some morphine. Bless him. Fun fact: Peggy Ashworth. Uh, was the uh, voice of the uh, wife in um, When the Wind Blows. Amazing. The yeah, the, the famous horrific cartoon When the Wind Blows. <laughs> yes, yes. Which I so have it's, seen. it's kind of interesting <laughs> that she bookends her film sort of career with... Oh, was that her final role, was it? I don't think it was her very final, oh, right. but she, it's but one of her later there. roles. Like, mm. I suppose this wasn't her first role, obviously. Mm. Two ends of her career, of, mm. you know, she has sort of like public information films yeah. almost. yeah, yeah. And the the the, the Ashcroft Theatre in uh, in Croydon is named after her. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, because I oh, I, cool. I grew up near Croydon and I went mm. to a few shows there, so I, it was news to me, um, which was a shame. So I felt I should have known that as a, as a local lad. But um, yeah, you know, yet again we see that the power of these these small MOI films is that they can they really can pack a punch when they want to. Yeah. And the more we inco- uncover these films, we will cover them because they're, we think they're fantastic. At, at they're fantastic. They are. They are. They're fascinating in their own right. I think, yeah. you know, I was amazed to find that this is the first on screen depiction of Dunkirk. Yeah, it has I think to that's be. really special in yeah, and of it itself. Really, it, this should be cherished because of that. Um, mm. and, and the fact it isn't more well known of, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll put the question to some historians that we know um, when, when we release this episode because we'd love to know their their opinion on it um 
Because if it is, it's a bit of a, I think it's a bit of a coup for the podcast, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then hopefully when we do do our Dunkirk special, we can get people like Phil Weir on. And, oh, definitely. You know, perhaps discuss, you know, the importance of these films and mm. how they actually, is their portrayal of the of the evacuation realistic? And mm. what did they get right? What did they get wrong? No, I, I think Channel Instant does a good job. Mm. However. For, for an eight to ten minute film, I think so. However. They didn't think that at the time. Uh, listeners to the Miss Grant episode uh, will remember that we uh, took extracts from the documentary newsletter, um, which was a civilian publication um, about documentaries at the time. And I found a review from November 1940. And uh, it's pretty frank about how it feels about Channel Instant. Uh, as follows. It is a flaming insult to the men of Dunkirk and to the men and women of the little boats. A great story to the terms of a middle-class female chuntering back and forth across the channel and rescuing soldiers, only incidentally while she searches for her husband. To add insult to injury, one of the crew of her motorboat is quite gratuitously depicted as a half-wit. If ever a film symbolised the mental outlook by which Britain could lose this war, Channel Incident did it. I think that's unfair. I think they've misread it there. I think they might have. I think what they've they've done is they've gone. Oh, she's just looking for her husband. Yeah, he. But she's well, not. She she literally as soon as she's told that the boat's needed, she's thinking, "Got to go. It's Call yeah. of Duty. Got to go." But earlier in that review, he says that it should have come out sooner to the event. Perhaps so. Yeah. Yeah. Is it because he feels like in hindsight it was the wrong tone? Mm. Which is an it's an interesting. It is. It, yet again, you know we. we we love and what's the publication that's from again? That's from Documentary Newsletter. Hmm. I mean, that, that ran from like the, the, the 20s, I think. Um, up, yeah. Up till like recent times. I think it might have changed name. Um, and then we found a other contemporary review here. Um, and there it's a glowing review. And I think this was from a, a, a newspaper. And hmm. he goes, you see them in lines on the beach, wading to the boats, dying in the water, swathed in blood as they stumble to safety. It is right ex Ernest Betts of the Sunday Express, one of the most moving things I've ever seen in film. Congratulations to Anthony Asquith, director and Dallas Bauer producer on, an, on a difficult undertaking brilliantly achieved. This five minute film will be remembered for years. I mean, it's completely different. Yeah. It's a completely different sort of take on the whole film. Mm. And I wonder, you know, is that the sort of someone who is perceiving it from a documentary Mm. Uh, viewpoint of, of something that you know is to document the occasion and an actual perhaps the yeah perhaps the newsletter was thinking more in sort of stylistic terms possibly It's an interesting film. They, they get they hit a lot of points. Like they, you know, we have that great um, stock footage. We have some great, really tight shots that are atmospheric of them getting the men aboard. There's some comedic elements like uh, like Ferris, and there's a scene where like one of the Grenadier guards is being pulled on board, and um, there's like he sort of like he's being pulled up by a hook, and he sort of yeah. jokes that you know he's being pulled like take it easy bo peep like i'm not a sheep that's and it he's pulled yeah. up on board it's good humor and, you know, in there. yeah and it's, it's just like a little, humor again. little tiny tiny bit of like humor yeah. is injected into this like really serious situation of you know these men are being shot at by aircraft and dragged aboard these boats yeah. and taken out to to big ships waiting for them and hopefully getting them home that's it so yeah. it hits a lot of points for me and i think if i'd watched it in 1940 i would have been you know probably as impressed I as I, I am now yeah if, if, if I'd have been, you know, I, I think I'd have been edge of my seat really because it it it, mm. it was real life, wasn't it? Mm. You know, I think and I think we, you know, we've got hindsight and sort of we are students of history again. But you know, these films really they do serve a massive purpose for the way we can view the Second World War because yeah. you know they're being made at the time, and where there's a lot of secondary source films that are being made after there's, there's reams and reams and reams of movies that are made after the fact but there's very rarely any that are made during and for mm. a for a film made in 1940 about something that happened in yeah. 1940 you know you can't go wrong i mean the next film that's made about dunkirk or includes dunkirk within its sort of plot is um 
Mrs. Minerva, which is 1943, so it's like three years later. Of course, yeah. Channel incidents being made literally probably like three. It's probably be they probably start production like, like literally weeks, months. Probably, yeah. After yeah, well, yeah, and it, they, and it yeah. finally gets gets you know to screens by October. That's it, yeah. So well, yeah, you, and you see the short turnaround that Miss Grant had. Mm. So yeah, this is probably the same sort of thing. Yeah. This yeah, is a much more sort of. Um, I would say challenging undertaking of you know all the all the cast, the fact that it's been shot on water, so it's been mm-hmm. shot on uh, a wet stage, and you know the splicing in um, bits Getting of stock footage, uh, stock footage in there yeah, as well. Yeah. So it's a fairly involved undertaking. I would have thought to like put this together in as well as it has been. Yeah, the, and the production value is, is very high, mm-hmm. and, and it and it still shows now. You know, we we're, we're sort of fans of older films, black and white films. You know, sometimes. You watch a black and white film, you're like, oh, yeah, it's not great. But this, yeah. it, it it doesn't suffer from from yeah. being made of its era, shall we say? No, it's got a good cast, well directed, well shot, really good, concise, punchy story, good dialogue. It's pretty good. It's a good film. We highly recommend it. So, guys, if you get a chance to watch Channel Incident, please do let us know what you think. You can reach us on Twitter at Fighting on Film. We'd love to know uh, what you guys think of the film, so please do let us know. And if you have any suggestions for future films that we should be covering, let us know as well. We're always interested to hear from you. And be sure to leave a like, a comment or subscribe on any platform that you're listening on. And don't forget to check out our new website, fightingonfilm.com. I'm Robbie, signing off for once more. And I'm Matt. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next time. Bye-bye.